Look at these guys. Up front, you can recognize their faces, but as they go away into the distance, they become tiny little dots on the horizon. These are 20,000 soldiers during World War I that were assembled to form patriotic pictures like the Statue of Liberty. And you can imagine that because the Statue of Liberty looks undistorted from where we view it, it must be very distorted if you could see it from above because there's a tremendous distance involved. Here's another example. These are both things that I found on the Library of Congress website. They're very similar to 3D chalk drawings that people have made over the years on sidewalks, which from the right vantage point look like they're popping up out of the ground. But if you could imagine what they would look like from above or from another angle, they wouldn't work at all. There's a Swiss artist named Felice Verini who likes to make a lot of geometric shapes, and he's a really good example of somebody who has really specialized in this. And you can see that he's got these squares and circles, and they're very crisp, and they're very precise when viewed from the intended position. But if you get off axis at all, then the entire illusion is destroyed, and that's part of the charm of the entire thing. There are also people who take the opposite approach. They take the background and they meticulously paint it on foreground objects in such a way as to make the foreground objects seem invisible. Here's somebody who does it with trees and it makes the whole top of the tree look like it's floating in midair and the whole middle like it's not non-existent. You can see almost the road on the other side of it. But, you know, they do it with people. They do it with all kinds of other objects. This sort of anamorphic art has been very popular over the years, and it gets rediscovered and reinvented and, and reintroduced to the public in one form or another every century for since the Renaissance. 